Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Healthcare Heroes, How a Line of Health Leverages Reuse to Save Thousands of Dollars. Excited to be meeting with everyone today. I'll give a few moments for more members to roll in. And we will be getting started shortly. All right, all right. Just a few housekeeping items before we jump in. We will have some time at the end for a question and answer session. So please submit any questions that come to mind via the Q&A module. Uh, I do have some teammates monitoring the chat if you do drop them in there, so I promise they will not be missed. Uh, and today's presentation will include a pre-recorded video of our healthcare hero, Amber, giving a demo of the Reapy platform. So we are very excited about that. Uh, and finally, please keep yourself muted throughout the webinar. Again, if you have any questions, please pop them into the Q&A module and they will not be missed. Now we do have a nice amount of material to cover in 30 minutes, so we do have a nice little plan of attack. We'll just kick it off with a few intros. We'll then discuss how reuse is making an impact across the healthcare industry as a whole. We'll dive into Alina Health's reuse program, and then we'll also give you that sneak peek of the Reapy tool, like we mentioned, and then we'll close out with an open conversation if there's any questions. But all right, here we are. I am Austin Randolph III. I'm a customer success manager here at Reapley, and I've been here for almost three years, uh, crazy enough. Uh, and I've also had the, op uh, the opportunity to work with the line of health throughout my entire tenure here at Reapley. Uh, and today I'm here with Amber Portillo. She is a sterile processing technician at Alina Health. Amber, how long have you been in your position there? I had just uh, had my anniversary of one year. So one whole exciting year and lots of those working with Reapley. It's been great. Wow, wow, wow. Exciting to hear. So many more years to come. Uh, and we'll dig into your role and impact in just a few minutes. But first, I do want to set the scene here. As I'm sure many of you in attendance are aware, the healthcare industry creates a ton of waste. U.S. healthcare facilities produced almost 6 million tons of waste annually, and this waste costs for more than $760 billion per year. So it's an incredibly expensive problem, and it's also a problem for our landfills and our environment. And so we're starting to see healthcare organizations look for viable alternatives to curb the excessive costs associated with waste and make better impact on the environment. As we know, COVID-19 changed absolutely everything about how our healthcare systems operate, and that includes speeding up the move towards more sustainable options. So now we're seeing three strong signals in favor of reuse at scale across the healthcare sector. First, we're seeing governments push towards regulating and standardizing ESG policies. And we're also seeing more healthcare orgs focusing on corporate social responsibility, especially to patients and employees. And finally, we're also seeing a big move for healthcare companies to digitize their operations and reduce waste and carbon footprints. These three signals combined make the perfect condition to try something new, and that is reuse. Now, because reuse helps us tell a different story, here are a couple examples. A Reapley customer, Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, has diverted more than 53,000 pounds of furniture, fixtures, and equipment from landfill over the past three years, just from their reuse program alone. And Alina Health, who we'll share more about here shortly, has saved almost $200,000 from their reuse program. 200,000. Reapley's customers include five healthcare, pharmaceutical, and healthcare adjacent organizations with more than 115,000 employees in total. And last year, Reapley's customers across all industries avoided emitting more than 1.9 million kilograms of carbon into the atmosphere by reusing what they already had instead of buying new. Simply put, the potential here is enormous and also exciting. Now let's dig a little more in on Alina Health. Alina Health is a nonprofit healthcare system with over 28,500 employees and 8,000 providers delivering exceptional care across 90 clinics and 12 hospitals that are also all on Reapley. As one of the largest healthcare providers in Minnesota and Western Wisconsin, Alina Health is committed to reducing their environmental impact for the greater health of their patients, employees, and surrounding communities. In fact, since August of 2021, Alina Health has seen amazing success since implementing Reapley's reuse platform, not only through reuse of medical supplies via Amber's help, uh, but also furniture, decor, and even fitness equipment. And while aiming to reuse as much material as possible internally, 
Alina Health has also been able to create impact in the local community by donating items that are no longer needed internally. But now, let's hear directly from Amber herself on how Alina Health's Bandana Square Clinic achieved $51,000 and counting in cost savings. Hi, Amber, thank you for your patience. Please tell us a bit about your position and team at Alina Health. Yeah, hi, I am a sterile processing technician at Alina Health Bandana Square in St. Paul, Minnesota. I work with two other amazing technicians to sterilize our instruments in our clinic, but as well as post everything that we need to on Reaply and organize everything. Awesome, that is awesome. Uh, so how did resource sharing take place before Reaply? Oh, before Reaply, it was quite a nightmare. We actually usually would take about a week or two to find one or two instruments that we needed to look for. We would go through thousands of instruments um, as a team and just dig through them. Uh, there was no real good way to do it other than email. So we'd send lots of emails back and forth. A lot of times we would get items actually returned to us because it actually wasn't what they were looking for once they received it. So we really struggled with that a lot before. Wow, I can imagine a lot of time was spent there. Uh, I know that you mentioned you just had your one year anniversary. When did your team actually start using Reaply? We actually started in July, 2023. The idea started a long time ago to try to find some sort of reuse program. We actually implemented it in July, 2023. And we started adding it kind of into our monthly meeting. Hey, you know, we actually have some uh, new instruments that are available on Reaply, you know, check them out. Maybe you might find something that you've been looking for for your clinic. And so it's been a good way to kind of get things going and, you know, other people coming onto the platform. That is amazing here. I know there are so many new learnings, um, you know, when you did start using the tool, but what were maybe some of those first things you, you observed? A great thing that we observed uh, was that we were able to add a lot of detail to the listings, things that you really can't do via email unless you want to write, you know, a whole paragraph. And those are really essential, especially when people are looking for one specific item, like how many teeth on an instrument specifically or a specific length of an instrument. You know, maybe they're looking for a specific surgery set that they want to add to. You know, they are really particular depending on what kind of surgery it is or what kind of procedures they're doing. And we found that um, adding all these details have really helped. I believe it. I can only imagine how important granularity is when inventorying some of these specialized items. So that is phenomenal. Uh, well, now we want to give you a sneak peek of how Amber actually uses the Reaply platform. The first thing I do in the morning when I order Re when I open Reaply is look at this new offer that I have available. Looks like I have 200 red messages and one offer. Let's click on that now. Looks like Sarah with Alina Health would like a forcep. I know that I have this available in my inventory, so I'm going to click accept. And confirm order. Now I'll get ready and pull it from the inventory. And then as soon as I have it packed and ready to go and sent out to MedSpeed, I will mark as delivered. From there, I'm going to decide to put up some items that I just got from a different clinic. We received a few ads and tissue forceps, so I'd like to go ahead and post those while I can. I'm going to go to create. I create a listing. Just one single listing for today. I have some ads and tissue forceps. I am going to add this picture right here. If I don't have a picture and I'm not sure about replacement cost or weight, I can look at this AI suggestion. And a lot of times it will just fill in the blanks for you. You can decide if you want to use that or not. The category is going to be surgical instruments. The current condition is good used condition. I am going to put more than just myself for the listing manager. I'm actually going to put my whole sterile processing team. So I'm going to add Jo Lynn on here so she can help me get orders ready if I don't have time that day or um, if I just need her to take over for me when I'm on PTO. I'm also going to add 
Shoshana Curtis here. That way we can make sure everything gets sent out in a timely manner. Do not need an asset tag for this. The description of this is going to be that it has one by two teeth. So then they know exactly what it looks like on the inside. The location is gonna be Bandana Square Clinic right here. And I'm gonna offer both the inter-office shipping as well as local pickup if they decide they wanna pick up here instead at the Bandana Square Clinic. I know off the top of my head that the AdSense do cost about $10 to replace. We actually have three of these available. So I'm gonna go ahead and make three of them. Just wanna share it with my organization. And I also know that this weighs about 0.1 pounds, not very heavy. One thing I do want to add is that it actually is stainless steel. That does make a difference when it comes to surgical instruments. Other than that, everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish. So it looks like I do have, you know, use condition three of the AdSense tissue forceps, and it looks just the way I need with everyone I need here as a uh, listing manager. As I open up Reaply, I notice that I have two unread messages here. Go ahead and click on that. So right now I am currently working on both of Sarah Adams' orders for her nasal speculum and her uterine forceps. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the nasal speculums here. The last piece I need before I go ahead and ship her order out is actually going to be her mailing uh, stop number. So I'm gonna go ahead and just message her and ask her her mail stop number so I make sure that it does indeed go to the right clinic. It's a lot easier than having to go back and forth between email so I can keep everything together in one spot. I know exactly what she needs, how many of the things that she needs, um, and as well as all the information for shipping. So I'm not having to switch back and forth between Reaply and my email and trying to kind of combine those. This is a lot more simple and user friendly. Go ahead and send that and I will wait for Sarah to reply so then I can send that out for her. As soon as it is sent out, uh, I am gonna look here, see her mail route number, click on view order, and then I will mark the item as delivered so I know it has completed the next step, it is out of my hands, and we will wait for her to receive the item in order to complete the process. Wow, <laughs> that demo was amazing. Uh, Amber, it's, it's very clear that you're an expert in what you do on the Re platform and also uh, at Bandana Square. So thank you for that. Um, but now, you know, what what are some of the metrics that are most important to you and your team here? It's been pretty incredible to really see how much uh, we have done. And so we love the metrics, especially the replacement cost. So we are really tracking kind of month to month, but also almost in the past year, how much we've actually saved a line of health in general by, you know, reusing these instruments and sending them out. It's been absolutely incredible, as well as the, you know, a number of weight we have saved from putting those instruments in the landfill. Um, instead of putting them there, we're going ahead and, you know, reusing them. And it's just great. Awesome is awesome. I mean, 2024 is actually starting off in amazing fashion because uh, your organization has already saved over $20,000 in the last 30 days alone. So, uh, you know, the more material you add, I, I can only imagine us uh, accomplishing more and more. Um, but now I have more of a, a peculiar question for you. I know you see a lot of material, you know, at the Medina Square Clinic. So what's more of a unique item you've had to figure out how to list on the platform? Recently, we actually got a lot of um, ophthalmic instruments that specifically were for surgeries and things like that. Very, very, very tiny. And so the detail was extremely important to be able to put in there, as well as being able to add more than one photo in each posting was very helpful. We'd take pictures from different angles. So then for sure people could know that is exactly the item they want. Many items look the same in the ophthalmic instruments, but they really aren't. So it was really important to add all that detail and have the capability to do that. Awesome. Wow, that is awesome. Um, 
And I do have another question for you as well. And, you know, given there's, I mean, so many clinics uh, as well as hospitals, what would you say you're most proud of now that Ripley is a part of your day to day and you're able to drive so much impact? So actually, just last year in October, we did open a clinic called the Lakeville Eye Clinic. And we, like I said, had a bunch of instruments in a few months before that that did come in. And we actually ended up distributing about $3,500 worth of surgical instruments just to this one clinic alone. So we were able to save them quite a lot of money in just giving them this large quantity. And we've done that with a few other clinics as well, about the same amount that we've saved them. Wow. That, that is amazing because, you know, a lot of people think it's just about reducing the waste that you currently have and creating space. But, you know, it was really for the receiver as well. Um, that new location just saved money on procurement spend for, for items that are already within your network. And, and you were a part of that. So that, that is phenomenal. That is phenomenal. Um, as of now, you know, given how much you've learned and been able to uh, kind of drive through reuse via Ripley, what advice would you give uh, to anyone who wants to implement reuse at their organization, you know, whether it's, it's healthcare or another industry? Definitely recruit a small group of, you know, two to three people because it is going to take a lot of time to organize, sort, and then listing the items to help reduce the waste. And definitely, you know, by word of mouth, talk about Reaply, how great it is, how great it is to go ahead and, you know, add all these details, things like that. So people can know to go and look for what they need on there, not just like we have surgical instruments, but other items as well. Um, you can do quite a lot with Reaply. I can imagine. I can imagine. And it all starts with the team. I know you have a phenomenal team assisting you. And we also have that feature with listing managers, you know, where you can all share ownership of the post and make sure everything gets reused. So thank you for that advice. Thank you for that. We now have time for questions from the audience. If anyone has questions for Amber. see. Here you are. I know there are many Reapley systems in place across the nation. Do they all automatically connect to one another? That is a great question. That is a great question. So I actually think I can take this one. Um, the answer is yes. Uh, you know, it, it can be yes or no. So it's ultimately uh, upon what your organization is most interested in. So if you're looking to reuse, um, you know, hyper locally or just internally at first, then that's how the system can be set up. But if you have a uh, material that can be used outside of your organization or more commonly found material, um, we are we do have the option of connecting you with the local community, whether it's nonprofits or just community organizations or other businesses uh, for more of a B2B reuse opportunity. All right, all right. Can you tell us more about the grant from Dakota County that Align Health received in their initial goals for using Reapley? Great question. Uh, Amber, do you have any, uh, any thoughts on that question there? Um, no, I'm not sure. I haven't heard about that one. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, but yes, uh, the initially when Align Health did begin in 2021, uh, Suzanne Hansen, who is our uh, Director of Sustainability at Align Health and also the admin here for the Reapley program, um, did receive a grant for around $10,000 to uh, implemented reuse program. Uh, and the goal was to, you know, lower waste to landfill. Um, and Reapley is actually resource agnostic. So whatever material that Align Health owned that they were looking to reuse uh, or not dispose of, they were able to share on the platform. And the goal was connecting all of the clinics and hospitals so that there was one source of truth uh, to drive visibility of, of the surplus that they had. Following that, there was uh, a little over $50,000 in cost savings within the first uh, six months, which is a pretty short time frame. We were able to expand and extend. And, um, you know, before you know it, you could look up after a year and we had a nice circular system internally to reuse amongst the hospitals and clinics. But before you know it, you know, we had an external community of well featuring, you know, Salvation Army, Goodwill, uh, you know, even Habitat for Humanity, where we can really find homes for material, um, whether they were up to clinic or hospital standard or able to be reused externally as well. All right, another check question. Uh, Amber, how did you get interested in reuse? 
So I actually started my career in nonprofit veterinary medicine, and it's really important, you know, in that, that we save costs as well as, you know, reduce waste. And so I started just kind of having this big interest in finding ways that we can, you know, save costs and all that. And then I moved into, uh, you know, Alina Health, and I saw the opportunity there of all the thousands of instruments. And I said, well, you know what, it's time to just go ahead and get started and trying to get a reuse program in place. Uh, we have all these instruments. We're not doing anything with them, but someone might really want them. And that is exactly what we found. Awesome. I actually have a great follow up to that. Um, and I'm kind of familiar with, you know, what's clinic stand and what might not be because sterilization is very important. Uh, Jennifer, I actually wanted to know, have you had any pushback from clinics or others accepting reused items? And, and how do you kind of manage that? We really haven't had a lot of pushback. We do notice, though, that some clinics prefer to have brand new instruments uh, for their surgical procedures, but then they're okay with using the used ones for small, you know, clinical procedures that they're doing um, that, you know, suture sets that maybe they want to take out and things like that, you know, just some small forceps that they might use in the clinic to pull something. So it kind of depends on the clinic. It's been different, uh, but a lot of clinics we see are doing that. They're, they're start starting from scratch in the with the new stuff for surgical procedures but something different when it comes to small little procedures i could see that i can imagine that and also jennifer that is also one of those opportunities for that uh community partners opportunity as well so um if there's something at a health care organization that is not up to clinic standard or hospital standard which could even be a patient share right um once it can no longer be in a patient facing area we would then uh, see if we can donate it within a local community Any more questions? Let's see. Oh, explain how the donations work. Absolutely. So um, once again, there's a few ways you can go about it. Um, our goal, first and foremost, is to allow you to work most closely with community partners mm -hmm. uh, or nonprofits that you actually have a relationship with because, you know, helping and reusing uh, is just that much more impactful when you're actually giving to, to someone that you have a relationship with as well. But once you do identify partners that you would like uh, to connect to your network, you could then inform us. And we also have the option of fielding a few uh, recipients as well. We will uh, reach out to them in a pretty simple uh, fashion um, by creating them a, a small marketplace for them to view your items, providing them a link to quickly register and log in. And then at any moment, they have the option of logging in for free to see any items that you're looking to donate. Uh, and then we just work with you um, to kind of set a few parameters around how you want to work with these partners. Um, ideally, they would come and, and pick up anything that you have available. Um, and if you have particular pickup days or ways that you, uh, you know, plan or prefer to work with them, we will help you kind of set that plan and uh, have that visual in the platform. So it's uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's see, can you talk more about community partnerships? What kind of partners, what kinds of materials are donated? How are pickup logistics organized? Yeah. Um, so overall, once again, if it is something that your organization is, is able to donate um, locally and uh, just to give a better example, it could be a table, desk, or chair. Um, it could even be an old MacBook, right? So the value or the type of you know item itself um, is totally up to your organization as far as what you're able to donate. But we will find uh, takers or recipients based on the type of material type. So say your organization is focused in the built environment, or you just had a decommission or a small renovation, you might have more of a you know a building material where it's like wood, uh, something like that. You might reach out to a Habitat for Humanity. Um, and see if they have any projects where they might need building materials. Um, if it's more of long electronics aside, maybe we're going to reach out to a local school um, and see if they need some IT peripherals for a particular student. So really just depends on the, the category of the item itself. Um, but there's typically always a, a nonprofit or community organization that is more than interested in receiving the item. How does the Reaping Network work in the Chicago area? I hear you have a quite few organizations there. Yes. Um, so we have different areas, um, you know, in, in the United States where we do have a few partners and small little circular systems, if you will, uh, of community partners that are always interested or looking for reusable material. Um, so if you are in a particular uh, market of such like Chicago, we can definitely connect you to uh, our, our Chicago market to make sure that you can either post the material that you're looking to reuse or potentially reuse material that is already available within your community network. Another good question. Uh, Amber, how often do people choose local pickup versus the inter-office shipping? 
interoffice shipping is definitely more common. It's pretty easy for me to just go ahead and throw it in the box and, you know, go ahead and send it off. It only takes a couple of days, really. Um, MedSpeed is great with us about that. And usually we send it a lot more things from our clinic specifically anyways into our office. But we have had a few people that do larger pickups that might live close or go, you know, on their way to work, they stop by and they just pick it up and we just have, you know, their name on it in a box. And that has worked really well too. So it's really, you know, up to you and how you like to do it, but we have seen both ways. Nice. That is nice. And I have another follow-up for you that I kind of want to tackle first and then pass it to you, Amber. Uh, Crystal asked, do you inspect the instruments you're sending for cracks and pits before selling them? Uh, suggestions for possibly where to send instru instruments that are not meeting sterilization standards like pitted instruments. Um, to start, as of now, Alina Health is not selling in the platform, but that is an option for them as well as any other organization, depending on if that is the goal of the material that you're looking to reuse. Um, so there isn't anything for sale, uh, but I would like to believe that, that Amber does uh, inspect the instruments. Um, and then also, if something isn't up to standard, we have the option of either donating it to possibly Matter, which is an organization that kind of looks for um, you know, medical instruments to um, aid third world uh, countries or any other area of underserved communities that might need medical supplies. But I um, definitely want to pass it to Amber as well for more particulars. Yeah, I definitely agree with what you say. Things like uh, pitting or things that you don't think can be fixed, we usually do then dispose of it because it's just not safe for no matter what organization to use that. But it is, if it is something like, oh, this instrument just looks kind of old, but it's still usable, but I don't know if I want it, then, you know, absolutely go, you know, donate it to a different partner uh, clinic. But I do try to look at every instrument as I'm sending it out. But, you know, as you're receiving them, it's super important to make sure they're up to your clinic standards and everything since before you sterilize it before you clean it all that uh, just the extra checks is a really good thing to do all right all right let's see we have two more questions here do you or will you have standard practices or even requirements where built where buyers should or must check the weekly site before ordering something new oh my god it's like it's like your speech to our ears those, those are very important things to kind of implement um so yeah, I, I can kind of tackle it first and also pass it to Amber to see if she has uh, any thoughts, but um, that is the ultimate goal. Um, I think a lot of, when you think about reuse and recycling and uh, more sustainable um, decision-making, it really is change management when you think about it. Um, it's changing the thoughts and minds of how we interact with our you know, materials, how we use them and how we dispose of them. So um, if we can, we look to create guidelines or um, policies or really um, just language that speaks to the need or importance of checking weekly first. Um, and putting it in places where people are, it's, it's almost like the point of purchase, if you will. Um, so if there's landing pages or websites where people are, are typically going to find material internally at the organization, we really want to leverage Reaply or, or place a link to the platform there as that last minute reminder. Um, but I also want to pass it over to Amber, you know, for a lot of the material you inventory, um, what are some of the ways that you might proactively reach out or make sure that people are aware of uh, the work that your team is doing? Yeah, I exactly agree with what you said. Um, right now, we're definitely looking at, you know, how to implement um, more checks and stuff like that. Right now, we're mostly still working on, though, getting word of mouth out, making sure people know that it is an option to actually look at Reaply and uh, put stuff on Reaply as well. So we're starting with that and slowly working on seeing if there are any other things we need to do and implement to, you know, make it more efficient. Awesome. That is amazing. Uh, another one for you. Um, and I'm not sure if you've done any donations of your instruments as of yet. I, I do think there's a time that it might come, but possibly even through Matter, the a nice relationship that you currently have. Um, but how would you say local items are, are donated um, or are essentially made accessible for pickup? So are they brought to the loading dock area? Are they kind of left outside and maybe by you know the, the front desk? How would you say the logistics are coordinated? So we have a very, very small clinic. It's not big at all. So it's easy to just come in. You know, we ask, um, you can go ahead and ask the front desk where we are. I usually just give you my location, the floor number, and we have a small team that they are all aware of everything. They know exactly who's picking up what and even what's in your order. So they know, you know, what to give you, but usually I have it ready, you know, in a box ready to go and everything. Um, right now with Mission Matters, we are usually donating things that, like I said, might look a little bit old and we're not sure if we want to send that out or not um, and we're usually just uh giving that right to mission matters yeah amazing amazing so much more reuse we can do and just excited to to be able to kind of share this with the world but um we are coming up on time i would love to answer a few more questions but the best thing is we have all of them saved 
Um, so if you do have any questions that have not been answered, uh, you know, Amber or myself will be able to follow up with you directly. And, uh, and you'll also be able to find this recording online if you would like to uh, revisit this or share it. Thank you all everyone for joining. I uh, hope you had an amazing time. And uh, once again, we're happy to present you today and uh, be meeting with you.